Hello, it is Friday, March 12th, 2021. Uh, and let me just get rid of that. Yep, okay. So, let me get rid of that. All right. Don't like my hair today. It's weird. Anyway, uh, oh god, the camera. Again, the camera, really? I adjusted this thing twice before the stream. God, this is the shittiest camera, I swear to god. This thing pisses me off more than anything else. Oh my god. I just don't understand. Like, it seems no matter what I do, it just never works out. Oh my god. Come on. Uh, apologies. Like, I genuinely, I generally try to adjust this thing before the stream, but by, you know, yeah, the next, you know, it changes every 10 minutes or something, and I don't know why. Like, I've closed off all the natural light, so it shouldn't be that the natural lighting changes anything. Oh god, whatever. I can't. Okay, that'll just have to work. Alright, whatever. If it gets too bad, I'll fix it again, but yeah. Closed off all the natural light in the room, so it shouldn't... I mean, what do I have to do? Do I have to get a lamp and just shine it in my face to actually make the lighting enough for the camera to pick up? That might genuinely be it. I also might just get a better green screen. Maybe if I get a more neon green one, it might work. But anyway, uh, this game has to be done by tomorrow. Uh, the white balance is off. That could cause issues. Oh, the white balance is off. Uh, so, Z I think it's Zaysha. Uh, how can you tell? I don't know anything about video. <laughs> about um like camera stuff i just vaguely know how to get it to work so if you could give me a little bit of advice that'd be super awesome uh and also how do i fix it <laughs> is the other question because uh, i can i can tell something's wrong i just can't tell how to fix it uh i'm not sure what your setup is uh, not sure. Uh, okay. Uh, the way that someone told me to set it up was they told me to, like, um, since the camera that I have is not great, they told me to, like, bump the saturation coming through and then send it through a Chrome key, which is what I'm doing. But it's not great. Like, even setting, uh, like, a custom sort of color. Oh, God, this just made it a lot worse. Oh, God. Just makes everything worse. Yeah, that's what they told me to do, and so I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it appears to work sometimes. The other problem too that I have is that my camera likes to auto adjust, and I don't know how to stop it. Like so, for instance, if I put my hand up to it, it will like auto adjust to that, and then if I take it off, it's just. It, depend, it seems to adjust depending on what the color balance is on the screen, and so that's another issue with it. So whenever I'm facing the camera, I think it slightly changes the color. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I might just need an upgrade. I think it's just too bad to actually use. It was weird because I looked up, um, I looked up like live streaming, and I was like, which camera do people recommend? And I bought that one, and it's not that great. So that was probably wrong. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, since last time, what I have done... Oh yeah, I've actually added the whole title screen and everything. Uh, but that's not relevant right now. Yeah, what I did was I added this whole thing where you can select a background. Uh, so we could select, say, a bishop, and it'll turn this into a bishop. Uh, that doesn't do anything in terms of the game quite yet, but, you know. It uh, still works. Yeah, there is one issue that I discovered. So if we go to the end of the level here... Uh, and this apparently has to be done by tomorrow, so that's going to be quite a challenge. But uh, I fixed the rendering, too. So now you can see the actual pathing renders, well, well it's almost fixed. It doesn't render um, correctly here, but it does render correctly here with the items. Uh, it also renders correctly with uh, other pieces and the health bars. And so now it'll also render correctly behind here, so it renders behind the statue there. Um, yeah, but anyway, there is one issue. Uh, if we go to another level, uh, it will transform us back into the original piece, so we do have to fix that, which is not too hard. Uh, we do need to fix... 
There's a couple things we need to fix. But anyway, one of them is that issue with going to another level. So that is in the game manager. And the way that we're going to fix it is to fix, to actually do this the correct way. So the way that I had been doing the level transitions before is I had it load a level. It would save what's in your left and right hand. And then we have a coroutine that invokes half a second after uh, this method is called. We don't want to do this. <laughs> it was, um, this is just a bad solution. I mean, I know there's the, uh, is it, is it on scene? I thought it was on scene loaded. Oh no, right, 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 right. I remember now. You have to go into the scene manager and hook it up directly. That's what it was. So in the scene manager, what we want is we want a method that gets called when the scene is loaded. So I think you can do scene manager dot, uh, what is it? Is it, is it active scene loaded or active scene changed? I thought it was, yeah, scene loaded. So this is a unity event and I think we can, can either add an action to this or we can add a listener. So are you happy with that? You don't like that. Uh, because this is a scene to a scene load mode. So if we do scene mode, now are you okay with that? Yeah, okay. So we can just attach this listener to that. So what we can do is we can create a protected uh, void on scene loaded, which is what we want. I would use the on level was changed, but I don't know when that gets called. So that, uh, whoops. Hey, percentage guy, how's it going? On level was loaded. Finished, finished build eight of my game. Oh, that's cool. Is that the, the Lua one that you were talking about a couple, or, yeah, a couple days ago? Err, camera. Yeah. yeah, that's not any better. Oh my god. Stupid camera. Actually, that's probably a little bit better there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't had time to brush up on my Lua. I want to like what I want to do is for like a game jam one time I want to do like a game in Roblox just to brush up on Lua, and that might might get me to a point where I'm comfortable with it. But I think we need scene load scene. What is it? Is it load scene mode? Yeah, mode. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's I don't know when on level was or on level loaded gets called. Anyway, we can just attach uh, on scene loaded to this. So when scene gets loaded, now we will call on scene loaded here. And now what we can do is we can put this stuff in here. And we can say uh, public. Uh, no, not public. Uh, we can do a protected. Uh, I think it's an item definition. Uh, item in left hand, and then the same thing for item in right hand. And then I think we can do the same thing for, whoops, 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 no, no, no. We can do protected, um, oh god, what is it? Is it is it unit definition? Yes, all right. So this is the player uh, unit. And so now, before we actually load the level, we can save all that stuff, and then in on scene loaded, we can actually load it. So we can ignore this now. Uh, we can do player dot agent dot unit dot refresh graphics. So we need to do that. And then we can do item in left hand and item in right hand. And really, what we want to do is we want to say uh, if item in left hand. So if we did actually save anything from the left hand. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. It, that can handle nulls, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, and these, put that there. We can put that there. And we might as well put these before the load scene. And then we can do player unit is equal to player.agent.unit. All right. And then we do player.agent.unit is equal to. Uh, player unit, player unit. Okay. Uh, why? Oh, dot definition. Right. Okay. Why? Uh, 
Why? Oh, oh, no, 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 not that. Bad definition. Here. There we go. Okay, so now when we load the scene, it should load everything correctly. So let us check that out. All right. Oh, something's already broken. Oh, is it because... Where did you get called from? Does that get called initially, really? Oh, it does. Huh. Okay, interesting. So I guess what we can say is not in here. What we can say do, 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 do. Uh, if um, player unit uh, unit if that has not been set then it should initially be null and so that should mean that we don't want to do anything. All right. So let's see what that does. There we go. I didn't realize that um, that on scene loaded was called. It apparently gets called after awake. Is that right? Because we assign this in awake, and that gets called after awake. Unless there's something weird about this where it gets called. It gets called at least once after it's assigned. But no, it appears to be called after awake. I'll have to look into that because that's really weird. That shouldn't happen. Well, I don't know. I don't know enough to say that. But anyway, uh, yeah, we can change to a rook, sure. And let's go all the way over here to the next level. Uh, isn't it funny how Lua converts every single type uh, for print in, for print in except for Booleans and maybe tables? It's literally every single type. Yeah, that is a little weird. I assume you mean like you can't print it uh, normally? That's, yeah, that seems a little bit like an oversight. Sure, let's go, let's change to a bishop. And let's go grab a, an axe and see if we keep it whenever we move through the levels. Yeah, I don't know, some of like the built-in libraries in some languages are really lacking. I have to use two string. Otherwise, you can't print it. That's weird. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Does Lua do like implicit conversions? Like, can you do, um, you know, uh, whatever plus, you know, true, and get the, um, you know, get true? Can you do something like that? <laughs> I don't remember enough about Lua. All right, so move there. I don't know why that takes so long. It's really weird to me, but sure. Game manager is don't destroy and load. That could be part of the reason it behaves like that, like it does. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, yeah, the game manager is don't destroy and load, but the thing that's happening the thing that's weirding me, I, th I assume you're meaning um, for the on scene loaded thing. The thing that's weirding me out is that awake was being called, and then. Um, so we're getting to the point where we call awake, like when we load the scene. Yeah, so when we load the scene initially, my thought was that on scene loaded would be called before awake, because we're calling awake, and then at the end of awake, we register the callback to on scene loaded. And then it's getting called. So if we do like debug.log um, scene was loaded. Actually, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but we'll say like awake was called. Because what I think will happen here is I think awake will be called and then the scene will technically be loaded, which is weird to me. I don't. Yeah, so we get awake was called and then scene was loaded. So that seems weird to me because I don't know how it could, I don't know how it could call awake if the scene hadn't been loaded yet. But maybe it's just a quirk. Like I'm wondering if this is guaranteed to be called at least once or something. Actually, let me double check that because I can find out. Let's say uh, Unity Scene Manager 
after scene loaded. Scene loaded. I don't want to see this. All right, add a delegate notifications. Rather than being called directly, the script shows these delegate, blah, blah, blah. Add it to a list, never shown. Um, add a on scene loaded, which is literally what I was doing. <laughs> literally what I did. <laughs> uh, Oh, that's interesting that they do it in on enable. That's really weird. Uh, delegate can have a method hook. Finally, on disable, remove it. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't specify. It doesn't specify. But yeah, it does seem to be that on enable. Yeah, it does seem to be that it gets called. Yeah, that's really weird. I don't know. I don't know why that. I guess. Okay, I guess that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, because I guess in awake, you would want. Perhaps it can cause calls at the end of scene load. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's what it does. Because I think like the scene, maybe part of uh, loading the scene is calling awake. Uh, but actually, that makes me wonder. I wonder if start is called first. I just want to do. I just want to test that actually. Uh, on start. Let's actually see which one is called first. Because I actually don't know between. Oh, really? Awake, enable, and then start. Okay. So it has to be between. It has to be between on enable. It. It might be between on enable and start. That might make sense actually. Unseen loaded. Okay, let's see which one of those gets called first. I will bet that it is unseen loaded. Yeah, okay. So the ordering is start, enable, loaded, or awake. So the ordering would be. Be, it would be awake, yeah, awake, enable, scene loaded, and then start. That's very interesting. Okay, I guess that's good to know. If you ever need to do something between oh, enable and start for some reason, or awake and start for some reason, oh wow, you can really abuse that actually, because now you have. Now if you have some code that depends on something on awake and then something on start, you need to add something between the two. Have you discovered the execution order flow graph? Uh, I have seen it, but I don't think I've memorized it. Unity, awake, uh, start, execution, order. Order of execution. Ah, so this, okay. Uh, fixed update, game logic, scene rendering, huh, they don't show it here, actually. Yeah, they actually don't show it here. First scene load, yeah, it really does. I didn't realize it was this uh, detailed. So yeah, thanks for telling me about this because I didn't, I didn't realize that they had something this detailed. Like my in my brain, I knew about awake, I knew about start, um, vaguely knew about update. Subtleties of the scene load, though. Yeah, this might also just be an old graph, right? Oh well, no, this is in 2020, so it should be, should be updated. Uh, do they tell, so they say about first scene load, it says awake, enable, objects add to the scene, on enable functions, in between frames, animation, rendering coroutines, uh, object destroyed, uh, scene load. Loaded. Level is loaded. 
uh, the function is called just after the object is enabled. It happens when a model behavior instance is created, such as when the scene is loaded. Interesting. On validate. Wow. Okay. Huh. Okay. I'll have to keep that keep that open just to know about it. But okay, yeah, that's really weird. I, I really didn't know about that. <laughs> uh, okay, we don't need this anymore. Uh, so we did fix that issue. That's good to know. Uh, did I get rid of these? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Okay, so the other stuff that we need to do today we have all this, good. Oh yeah, we need to add the uh, health and mana values, which we don't have. Also, uh, we need to get rid of, oops, let me look at you really quick. All right, we need to get rid of this because we're not gonna be doing, oops, not that. Ah, yes, we need to get rid of you because we're not gonna be doing anything with that, unfortunately. Uh, what kind of text do we want? We probably want this kind of text, right? No, no, no. Uh, sure. We'll just add in... Where is it? Uh, I forgot where I put everything. Alright, it's in belt, it's in health. I think these have, yeah, these have resource bar components. So that's actually very easy to fix. So what I want is I want to add in uh, some text. Uh, and this is for the health. And the rendering is all screwed up. Oh, because it's masked. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, that'll have to appear above that then. I guess we can create an empty parent, right? And then, oops. Height and width of zero, yeah. And then I just want to put you over here and then below that. All right. Why did it get masked? Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Let's undo that. No, really, why is that getting masked? Um. Because I thought masks only applied to the child. I didn't realize they applied to everything. Hmm. If I put you over here. Ah, okay, so it's under the belt. That was the problem. Uh, oh, is it turn-based? Ah, okay. So let me uh, explain it a little bit. Yeah, the idea is that it is turn-based. Um, so it's sort of it's supposed to be for the uh, seven-day roguelike challenge, but I don't have the turn-based stuff running right now. So the idea is going to be that we, you know, move and then I hit, and then the AI does its turn. I just have the AI's movement kind of bound to a key right now, just so that I can test everything without having to wait for it. But I do have the AI kind of running. It does take a minute, and there's not really any indication that it's done. But yeah, the idea is that it's a, it's a roguelike game. The way that you um, do damage and stuff is through this screen. So there's like dice for each stat. So when you level up, for example, like if you put dice in like the health stat, when you level up, the idea is that it rolls these dice, and it will give you stats based on that. So in the case of like attack, we don't have any dice. So the default damage is one. So if we attack, we get one damage. But if we go, we actually need a weapon to do more damage. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's, it's a little bit more complicated than what I described. But basically, uh, if I go over here again, it's so basically whenever you don't have a weapon in your hand, you deal unarmed damage. So you'll see the damage appear at the bottom, and then there'll be like a sword that has a slash through it. So that means that we are not armed. So if we slash, now it has the sword facing upright. And so if we're unarmed, we do half damage. And so if we put, you know, some dice into these, or into this, we will start doing more damage. So we do three this time. And as you level up, the idea is going to be that you get the ability to, to modify these dice. So uh, I need to fix this screen to actually show the amount of uh, experience we have. But like if we click on one of these faces, 
it'll increase the number of pips on the dice. So if I click on this one, it gave that one one pip because they're sorted by um, the size or by the pip value. But if I click on this one, I get another pip and then another pip here. And so now our attack dice have, you know, a couple more pips and so we do more damage. And so that's how the sort of stat escalation stuff works. Oh yeah, thank you. I actually, uh, like being able to modify the dice, I actually stole that from somebody else. Um, but, you know, steal, steal liberally and, you know, do what you do. But if we have like, you know, a magic um, item, the spell appears here. So in this case, we this one will damage things around us. I don't have the magic damage showing yet, but I kind of want to. And then this one, I think, heals us. And so, yeah, it increases our health. But yeah, the idea is that, you know, for magic, you'll just put dice into magic. You know, speed eventually will be rolled. Luck is basically like, you know, hit chance or critical chance or also um, like magic resistance. So all those are kind of rolled into the luck stat. Uh, I just need to fix all that. The only one that works right now is attack. Uh, defense works in a similar way. So whenever someone attacks you, you roll your defense dice. Uh, health, mana, and I think speed are all special in that I can't take dice out of them. So those dice I can take out, but like I can't take dice out of this. Uh, and that's just to prevent people from abusing it. So like, you know, before you level up, you can put all your dice into health and then, yeah. So something like that. Yeah, yeah, I um, yeah, I kind of figured out a little bit too late that I have a lot that I need to do. <laughs> uh, so as far as like the pathfinding and stuff, I wrote that all ahead of time because there was no point in rewriting it. But a lot of the dice stuff too was written beforehand, but not this screen. And yeah, the the actual dice rolling and stuff like oh, the actual um, you know, just UI for this took a lot longer than I expected. And so yeah, the next the next game that I make will not be this will not be this intense. <laughs> so yeah, part of the two biggest things were a just getting the getting the UI for this just for select or just for showing the path that took a long time and it still doesn't quite work. But yeah, the pathfinding was written ahead of time. The dice rolling, all I have to do is tell it which you know, all I have to do is tell it how many dice of which type are in a different stat and just tell it to roll them so it can do that but yeah it was the ui just ended up being way more than i expected and so yeah got a lot of work to do between now and tomorrow but i can get it done uh and if not i don't know <laughs> uh but yeah the next one that i'm going to work on is the like dungeon crawler jam that they're doing and uh yeah, I'm going to go a lot easier on that one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the UI is a bit... Yeah, I always underestimate my ability on UI. It's like everything just seems so simple until you try to, until you try to actually do it. One thing I ran into is that there's not really any good Unity um, list view sort of libraries that I could find. So for instance, like I want to show a list of dice, but you know, the UI, the code to write this stuff is very repetitive. And the same thing with stats. Uh, so if you look at like the stat thing, it actually doesn't appear and that's because I generate all those dynamically. But like ideally what I'd want is I'd want a component. Um, where is it? It's in, not here. It's in here. I'd like some kind of component where I just give it a list of like objects and then give it a template and have it like bind the objects to the template. But I can't find anything like that. And I've tried like twice to write my own, but it doesn't it doesn't work quite the way I want. <laughs> so I gotta find some solution for that. So I think 999 of 999 is probably good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think assuming that the player will only ever have 999 health is probably okay. Oh, the newer UI system? Wait, they have a newer UI system? Is there like a new... Is there like something in the works that I don't know about? Oh, 
Oh, really? There's a UI filter. Ooh. Oh, really? I need to look at this. Okay. Thank you for telling me about this, because this, you know, they've needed a better version of the UI for a long time. Oh my god, they have a data binding system, yes. Oh my god, really. And you can use, so they created their own XML and CSS. Oh my god, that's amazing. But also, that's amazing in both a good and a bad way. Okay, I'm going to have to look into this because this looks amazing. I assume it's um, I assume it's supposed to be very similar to the way that like um, HTML and CSS and stuff like that interact. Um, oh God, a CSS flexbox. Yep, yep. This looks exactly like how CSS. Yeah, based on recognized web technologies. Yes, because working with CSS was so easy the first time. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I am, this is exciting and also scary because I have, I have done web development before and it's what the editor is using for anything made after 2018. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I will definitely have to look into this for some other stuff because that's, it's both good and bad. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm not going to judge it before I before I look at it. Set mood, I don't write, oh, okay. Okay, so it's like a visual, it's probably closer to something like Android Studio, right? Or I just do it via C Sharp. Oh, okay, so if you can do it via C Sharp, that's, that's good. I'll probably end up doing that then. But yeah, just like data binding and... <clears throat> I mean, just data binding in and of itself is amazing. Uh, and if, especially if they have like a list view or something like that. Yeah, I didn't know about any of this. All right. Um, so there's view XML format. Oh, there's data bindings. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the, the, it, might, it might just be useful to do for the data binding alone, because writing the data binding code is always annoying, and it's always very samey as well. So, but yeah. Thanks for telling me about that, because I never would have found out about that. Uh, health uh, amount reminds me of WPF. Um, WPF. I'm not familiar with that acronym. Uh, it's like I want to say like Windows. No, I don't know. I don't know WPF. Uh, I'm trying to think. It sounds like a Windows thing though. some kind of Windows forms. Uh, so this is mana amount. Okay, so in this uh, resource stuff, you can add a Windows UI, okay. Yeah, I've not, I've not done Windows UI, but I've used, um, I've done like Java UI stuff. So I assume it's, well, actually, I assume it's probably closer to like Java FX or something where like Java FX you have like their XML stuff, but you can do everything sort of programmatically as well. Also, I never knew. Apparently rec transform is not in UnityEngine.ui. I never knew that. I always thought that they am I crazy? Like wasn't rec transform in UnityEngine.ui at some point? Or am I just crazy? Also, I don't need you to be engine.ui. What am I doing? I need TN Pro. Yeah, I think I think JavaFX was like the attempt to build to build something for Java to replace Swing, but also they wanted to use established web technologies, and it just ended up being bad. Uh, uh, this is the amount. Okay. 
So now in the amount, what we can say is amount.text is equal to, and then we just do string interpolation. And then this is the current over the max. Ah, oh, it's so much better. All right. So now in here, all we need to do is assign the health amount here and the min amount over here. Am I crazy? Oh, I never actually hooked this up to anything. Hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, I apparently never hooked that up to anything. So I need to go into here. Fair warning, the runtime version of the new UI system still has uh, some limitations. Animations and such. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because I do... Yeah, okay, I could see that. So I assume... Like, for this animation, I do this using the Unity Animator. Uh, is all of... Is it possible... Ooh, I actually don't know. Is it possible to animate the UI, the Unity, um, or the new UI stuff using an animator or no? Because, yeah, all of this is done through the Unity animator. Because it just, you know, it's kind of nice. I think I also do this through the animator as well. But, yeah, I could imagine that if the elements don't exist, if the elements, if they're created from an XML thing, I would imagine that the animations, yeah, I would imagine that they're not present in the editor, so you wouldn't be able to target them with an animator. I assume that's true. Nope, not yet. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I can understand why. But still, it's kind of it's kind of annoying. I think we have to get hit before this will show up. Yeah, all right. We need to fix that. Probably in refresh graphics. Uh, in awake health bar. Let's set that. Uh, health bar. Uh, dot on change. Uh, unit. Dot, uh, health, health current, and unit dot health max. Health max. All right. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So if, can, wait, can you use can you use the two together? Like, could I? Still in preview. Uh, it will have it before the release. Oh, okay, but is it is it possible to use the two together? Like, could I use? Could I use the UI toolkit for some things and just use the legacy UI for something else? That way I could still get my animations and I could get my list views as well. Oh, this is the health bar. This is not what I want. Um, where? I don't remember where I put this. So this is unit.take damage. Ah, right. So this is when this gets created. Uh, so it's in. Okay. Well, I'll, whenever I do like the uh, dungeon crawler thing, I will try to figure that out because I want to know. I want to know if I can do. Um, I want to know if I can use the two together. Have to mess with it more to know what workaround, what a workaround might be. Ah, okay. Do they do they plan to do the animations through like the way that uh, like are the animations going to be based on the way that CSS does animations? Like if they're developing something like USF, you could technically hand code transforms to animate stuff. Oh, okay. Hmm. So if you could hand code and transforms to animate stuff, huh? So wait, for the UI toolkit elements, do they have do they have transforms at runtime? Because if they do, I suppose what you could do is you could find the transform at runtime and then just tell some other UI element to just follow it. 
because uh, I do that a little bit too for some of my UI stuff. Uh, the components have a draw. Oh, okay. Okay, so if that's true, yeah, then you could just create the animations with some other kind of animator. You could just create the animations, yeah, because I think the animations, well, yeah, you could do something, okay. So yeah, my theory is that you could, yes, yeah, so you could create the animations. What you could do is you could create the animations and then strip off all of the elements strip off all the elements from the things that are being animated and then you could do some kind of binding at runtime and then just run the animations with the legacy UI and then just animate them on the new UI it's terrible but it would but it might work it you know I don't know it might be there's probably easier ways to do it but okay yeah I'm definitely gonna have to look into it and see what the limitations are so I'm very interested in this. This should work now. Okay, so yeah, now it's just 10 out of 10. Okay, happy with that. So now we can test that even further by going into the different pieces. Uh, no, it's not pieces, it's uh, units. Yeah, so the bishop, you should start with, I'm gonna say the base health is probably like 20. So you can start with like 15, then you can start with 15, pawn starts with the base 20, then the rook, <laughs> it'd be easier than that. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Okay, so yeah, our health is 20, so if we say rook, oh, you don't update, okay, interesting. Uh, in that case, what sets what sets that? Character select, uh, unselect background. So I need a de definition. Oh, you don't change. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. I'm compelled to mess with that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whenever I'm gonna be working on this for maybe two more days, and I'm I'm really eager to start to work with the you know, the new UI stuff because I wanted the like the more I've worked on this, the more I've wanted a list view, and not having one has just really been really been bad. And I also don't want to make one either because you know it's just not it's not easy to do, especially when. Um, like I tried to make uh, mono behaviors generic and Unity doesn't like that, so I guess that's fair. Yeah, with, with not being able to add generics to mono behaviors, it's really hard. Um, hmm. Because you basically have to add another layer on top of it to make it generic and it's, ugh, it just gets terrible. Okay, so the problem here is that we're creating a unit based on the previous unit definition and then adding a callback here per what does this even have in it? it has some actually important stuff in it all right so then really that needs to be hmm. Yeah, there's some real problems with this. Hmm. All right, I'll have to deal with this at some other point. Because I think the health bar is still tied to the old, or to the original version of the unit. So if we set this to like a bishop or something, I think our health bar down there is still tied to that. I don't think... Yeah, it's tied to that. All right, that's... Kind of annoying. Uh, curiosity, do we heal? If we heal ourselves, oh yeah, we do heal ourselves. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, whatever. I will deal with it later. Anyway. 
And what we want to do is we want to add mana to this. This will be mana. Then in the unit itself, this needs to have mana as well. So probably int uh, mana current uh, get protect set. Spells don't currently use mana, and they do need to. This will be the mana max, right? Then the mana max is going to be equal to def. Yeah, not that. Uh, definition dot mana, and then the mana current is equal to mana max. All right, and I should say public void uh, cast spell uh, and mana cost. And then we say mana current minus equals amount. Nope, minus equals mana cost. Uh, uh, it's probably fine. Uh, and then we say we need an on mana change. Uh, so int int. Ugh. Right, on mana change. This linking code is annoying. Alright, so on mana change question. We invoke with the mana current. And the mana max. Right, and then it's the resource bar component. Uh, oh, right, okay. Hmm. Uh, really, this doesn't need to target a unit. This needs to target a an action. Uh, where are we calling this? Why did I do it this way? Uh, I know references. Where did I do this? I did this in here. So really this needs to be unit dot unit dot on health change plus equal to health bar dot on change. Yes, yes, okay. We want to do it that way. So we can do a mana bar. We can duplicate this, and then this needs to be on mana change. And then we do mana bar dot on change. There we go. Okay. And then I believe it is in where is it? Spells. Where are you used? You're used here. Okay. Uh, cast spell. There we go. What we need to check is we need to check the... We need to look at the unit. So we need to grab all this. This is so terrible, but it is it is the way it is. Say so, uh, if uh, unit.mana... unit.unit? Yeah, dot .mana current, uh, let's say greater than... Uh, we might as well put a cost to, in here. Uh, cost, sure. Uh, if it's greater than or equal to definition, what is it, spell.cost? Uh, oh, do we not save which spell is active? Player.unit.cast. Oh, okay, we don't save which spell is active. We need to do that. So we need to say uh, protected uh, spell definition spell. Then whenever we set this active, we will say spell is equal to spell is equal to that. Then if the mana cost is greater than or equal to spell.cost. Then we do cast, and we don't need to tell it which spell because we already know because we have the spell that's being cast here. And we say uh, agent dot unit dot uh, cast 
Uh, no, agent.unit.unit. Oops. Yeah, unfortunately the naming on this really got screwed up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, whatever. The naming got screwed up, but I'm not. It's too late to worry about it, unfortunately. So this should should have everything working. Uh, when the unit gets created, uh, I don't remember. Is it in here? Where we uh, that set is it in refresh graphics? I don't remember. Uh, let's just set the starting mana for all of you to be I don't know ten. Sure, that'll work. And then in spells, let's just say the cost is five or now let's say two. That's probably fine. All right. So, okay, something broke. That's what I expected. Uh, why did you break? All right, cool. Te tweening workflow is an experimental release. Uh, so I assume that means the, the animation stuff is an experimental release. Why did I get an index out of range? Oh, uh... Value does not fall within expected range. So this is a null pointer exception, I believe. I believe this is a fancy way of it telling me there's a null pointer. Yes. Wait. Uh, oh, I didn't add resource to you. Is your resource bar component? Right. Component, I need to add a bar, and then I need to add the amount. Yeah, okay. So this is manual UI system compare animation one. Complete breakdown of features between the UI systems. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, versus IM GUI. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Comparison of UI systems. So this is the type of UI, the editor runtime, UI toolkit versus UGI, UGUI, UI editor. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, so for rendering, there's a lot planned. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope this fares better than everything else that they've tried to do. Because it seems like when the it seems like the Unity team does best when they just steal something that somebody else made. Not well not steal, but you know what I mean, like integrate a an engine that somebody else made. Like their physics stuff is fine, but from what I remember that's because they use bullet in the background. But like, you know, I'm just I'm hoping this doesn't turn out like um the what is it, the networking code they tried to do? Because they've tried, what, like two or three times to do their own networking stuff, and they've just sort of given up each time. And so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this fares better than that. And then they try to do the JSON stuff, and it's just still better to just use the JSON, you know, the Newton soft JSON. So I hope they do well, but oh, we don't have SVG yet. It's going to be nice when we get this, if we do get SVG integration. Yeah, networking is a fun one. Yeah, I've tried to use both, or I've tried to use the original like master server stuff. That just, it's not great. And then the new Unity, or the newer Unity networking layer, and it's still just not great. I always just fall back to like Photon or something. Already used in the editor. So it's likely to get much better. Okay. Okay, yeah, I guess whatever they use for the editor is probably going to be fine. You know, because they actually use it. Yeah, I mean, at least they have sort of the basics nailed down. 
Visual scripting for events, yeah. Like all new UI tools are made using the new UI toolkit. Okay. Okay, so I assume like the shader graph and stuff are probably probably done using that. And if so, the shader graph is pretty nice, so. But yeah. Okay, so they have it in experimental and they have integration with anime. Ooh. Oh, this is what I'm hoping for. Hoping that they get this, but apparently. At least they're experimenting with something. Uh, yeah, I hope we get SVG integration. I hope we get shader graph integration. That would be nice. Uh, custom materials and shaders would be nice. 3D world space rendering could take it or leave it. Like, I know the 3D, like the world space 3D stuff is okay, but like, I don't know. I think you can get by without it. Well, it's technically possible to create 3D UI in image UI using UI matrix. It's not recommended. Yeah. All right. So integration with Unity, the new input system. Oh yeah, I've not messed with the new input system stuff. I still use the legacy one. I should mess with this too. Oh yeah, VR. Oh, that's cool. I feel bad not having used this, but I really should at some point. Uh, have you done anything with Unity's new uh, input system stuff? Because I did have a question about it before I start using it. But it's interesting that it gives me this value not within expected range. Like I think that that's a null pointer exception by another name. Because that's weird. It's been really stable, works well, been using it a lot. So for the Unity, for the input system, do they have anything akin to like input layers? Like if there's, like if there's a, okay, yeah, the new input system. So do they have anything akin to like input layers? Like the idea is like if I want to block input from going to specific, um, like if I want to register a bunch of game objects to have, like the way that I do it is I use the legacy system, but I have it, but I have a manager for it. And so the way that it works, um, where is it? I do something like this. So the idea is that you have a set of layers, and each one has a list of Unity events that it uh, links to. So the idea is that each method or each one has like a handle input. So whenever it moves between layers, uh, uh, things that were in the previous layer no longer receive input. So I do things like, um, like right here, you notice that the pathfinding isn't running at all. And that's because this select background is on a different layer. Like I can't even open the pause menu or the, the um, stat menu. And so whenever I activate one of these, then it changes the layer. And now I actually can, now the pathfinding runs all that sort of stuff. But whenever I um, turn on the pause menu, it moves to a different layer as well. So something like that. Uh, does it have anything like that? Or do you still have to manage, you know, manage when the menus are open yourself? Uh, just to give a little more detail, all this does is it creates, it just creates a stack. And so you can, you know, in the update, it just peaks the stack, calls all the listeners in that current layer. Sounds a bit like the action maps. Uh, I thought the action maps. Maybe that is. Maybe this is the action maps. Is there any? I guess if it is an action map, is there any way to turn an action map on and off? So like, can I say, hey, just no longer use that action map? Let me actually check this out. This is in fixed update. That right trigger was pressed this frame. So this is the input. So for the UI, invoke Unity events, invoke C sharp events. It can be enabled and disabled. Okay, so this does exactly, sounds like it does exactly what I want. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because normally I was doing this myself, but this sounds, yeah, it sounds exactly like what I want. 
Damn it, the lighting is changing. Uh, uh, it's not great. Uh, I mean, whatever. I can't fix it. Okay, yeah. If they can be enabled and disabled, that's basically exactly what I want. Because with the previous system, you couldn't really do something like that. I assume this also helps you like with rebinding hotkeys and stuff. Uh, let me... Yeah, I want this. Okay. Where is... Where, where is? Okay, there it is. So if I go here... Okay. But yeah. Okay, so for the next the next game jam, I will have to look into both. Indeed, they have a means of interactive rebinding. Ah, okay. Yeah, because that's that's stuff normally that I would have had to do myself. So I'm glad that they have that. Uh, let's see if I get attacked. Does that actually change anything? Okay. Yeah. Now it changes. All right. Uh. Rebinding to any device's input. Okay. So yeah, that it sounds like I need to use so that I'll have to mark that down for stuff to do for the next dungeon crawler game jam. Uh, so the new uh, input and the new uh, UI toolkit. Alright. Should be some fun toys to mess with. Uh, uh, go, 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 go. It's considerably more powerful. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, where are you being referenced? You're being referenced here. So you dot unchange plus equal to that. Uh, health bar dot unchange. Uh, unit dot unit. Yeah. Uh, do they do they mention do they mention this stuff at like uh, unite or anything? Because uh, I'm wondering I'm wondering how I can learn about a lot of this stuff. Uh, the catch uh, being a bit harder to learn. I consider it worth the effort though. Yeah, it definitely sounds like being worth the effort because otherwise, you know, writing writing the input manager stuff is kind of annoying to do yourself. And also the key rebindings, like I've always wanted that because I know that, you know, a lot of people a lot of people have different ideas about how key bindings should work and it's really hard, especially for like a game jam, to justify writing something like that. And so I've kind of avoided it and I just it's kind of a feature that I wish I'd be able to, that I could add easier. <laughs> All right. Now that should okay. Why does it now rebind the mana? Uh, oh right, mana bar dot on change. Why did that? I don't know why that didn't work. I guess no. Okay, never mind. That made sense why that happened. Okay, there we go. Now the health and mana actually show up. And so now, if we cast these, it's so good resources, Brackies has a decent video intro for the basics, out of the way. I assume that's for the, the input stuff. Also, is Brackies, uh, is Brackies still uh, not doing stuff anymore? Like, I heard that he stopped doing videos, but I don't know if that's true, if he came back or not. So I know there was like a big scare where I think like what was it Linus uh, Linus wanted to leave as well, so he's still he's still away or is he still doing videos? Uh, let's see here. So we do lose health directly. Oh, that's sad. Bracky's shaped hole in the internet now. Okay, so we. Let's grab this. This should cost us two to heal ourselves. Yes, okay. And now we can't do it anymore because we're out of mana. Great. 
I can't cast the new orcs for Adam mana. Great. Yeah, that's really sad. I don't I never heard what he was trying to do afterwards, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he just, he always seemed, I don't know, he always seemed really happy. It's just, it's weird to me, I don't know, it's, it's weird that people would make the choice. I don't know. Like, I can't, it's weird for me because I can't imagine, like, if I were doing something like, you know, programming, I can't imagine moving to a different kind of job. But I don't know, maybe that's because I just like it too much. Okay. So we have no way of regenerating mana quite yet, but we can fix that at some point. Mm. Okay. So at the very least, we have the health and mana stuff sort of working. Uh, we have this, yeah, it still shows the casting animation. Stalling him long before he was doing the Unity stuff. He really just loved teaching and it showed. Yeah, he really seemed to like, that's, that's one of the things that I, that's one of the issues that I have is that I would love to, you know, do tutorials and stuff because I know a lot about programming, but I just, I just can't get into the teaching and I think it, you know, it shows when I try to do it. But like for people who can do teaching and especially him, because he seemed to know a lot about, a lot about programming, I'm curious what he's going to teach next or if he's actually going to do more teaching. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Did he say what he wanted to do next? I didn't actually watch the video. I just like I think it was. I think someone posted it on Stack Overflow, and that's how I probably found out about it. Also, hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else needs to be done. We need to get the level up stuff working actually. Yeah, let's get the level up stuff working. So what I'm going to do is just for the purposes of... I'm not sure what he plans to do. Okay, so I assume he didn't he didn't say it in the video or something. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know. I wish him the best. He, he really, I don't know, he really uh, taught a lot of people how to do a lot of good stuff. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people who have, who the only reason they have their career is because of him. You know, not in a bad way, just, you know, he just made, he made a lot of programming stuff accessible to a lot of people. You know, I mean, I'd have to say that, like, the Warcraft, like, the Warcraft 3, like, world editor is probably the reason that I have the career that I do today. Like, he, uh, or, you know, career that I had, I don't know, not really, left my job, but, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I know a lot of people who got like really inspired by him just because I don't know he he just made it just made the knowledge very accessible and just his personality alone was enough to make you keep watching. Like guys, I think he's well. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy how young he was too. It's crazy. Like some of these people, like they're super young and they're able to just do crazy things. I mean, he can, he could probably get a job with almost whatever company he wanted to. Like, I can't imagine I'm trying to think of any company that he could just, you know, that would turn him away. Because, like, every company needs, well, most companies need someone to teach people how to use their product. You know, I mean, whether it be, like, Google or Amazon or, you know, just any massive company. Like, man, I can't even imagine being in that position. Like, I don't know, being in his position, I can't even imagine where I'd want to go work or what I'd want to do. I mean, I, to be fair, he probably doesn't ever have to work a day in his life again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I suspect he will. I suspect we haven't heard the last of him. Yeah, I wonder who's going to replace him. Like, I wonder who who the de facto sort of person is going to be. Also, i got to figure out where to put this code. Uh, so this is for the level up stuff. 
that needs to at least attach to the player unit because we need to re-roll player's health. And I guess it can be put in the game manager. I guess that's probably fine. Because really what it needs to do, really it should go in the player component though. So it really should be not here. It should be in here. So it's like public void, uh, well actually. Public void uh, level up. It's so really what should happen when we level is we want the uh, agent agent dot unit dot unit. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, dot health max to change. Uh, and so that's going to be equal to the game manager dot instance dot player stats. Oops. Dot health dice dot roll. Actually, what we want to do is we probably want to. What we want to do is we want to roll multiple times. Probably like I don't know. Roll twice. Just roll with advantage, basically. Uh, so we'll just do innumerable dot range of zero to two or zero to one. No, wait. No, it's zero. To, yeah, it started zero with a count of two. Uh, then we should select. Uh, each index such that we want to roll the dice, get the total, and then we will select the max. Yeah. We'll say uh, our bonus health is equal to that. Just roll twice, get the max, and then we just add bonus health, and then we want to call on health change. Or whenever we change max health, we want to call on health change. Uh, do we want to really make an auto property for this? No, we really don't. I mean, the correct way would be to make it an auto property, but I'm not going to do this the correct way. Uh, I feel sort of bad, but not really. Uh, so say agent dot unit dot unit. Yeah, it's it's too late in the game. Do you have to be doing stuff the correct way? So it'll be on health change. Uh, it should be the max health. Really, what we want to do is we want to do uh, this. So we do on health change, and it should be the current health plus the bonus health. Basically, we just add the bonus health to the current health and the max health. Uh, health current plus bonus health, and then health current unit dot health max. Because the max health has already been changed. Yeah, okay. And so now we just basically do exactly the same thing for mana. Say bonus mana is equal to that dot mana dice, not, not magic dice, mana dice. We roll those, and then we already have the unit, and then we add bonus mana. Okay, and then we will say the mana max and then the mana current. Well, actually, no, because we want to modify both the health current and the health max. So unit dot health current plus equal to. Ooh, actually, is this an auto property? Uh, we can't set it. Uh, so we'll just call unit.heal then. Heal by bonus health, yes. That'll work. And then the max man is not gonna change, but we'll deal with it. Cool. So that should upgrade health and mana when we level up. Now in game manager, what we can do is in handle input, just bind this to a key really quickly. So if input dot get key down key code dot e just bind this to the e key and then we'll call a player 
say player dot level up. There we go. So when we call level up, we should increase our health and mana based on how many dice are assigned. So let's say rook. So we end up with 20 health. All right. And then we just assign a bunch of these to health. And then sure, let's upgrade them a little bit. All right, now we hit the E key, our health should change by something. So it looks like it changed by three and then by seven. Yeah, 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 okay. Got that, perfect. And so it does appear to be rolling those dice. And so the way that we can test that is we can do this again. And sure, let's just set this to a one. So this should do either a one or a two each time. It should never do a three. So that does a one, that does a one, one, one. Is it only ever doing a one? No, there it did a two, okay. And so now if we roll with nothing, it should always be zero. At which point it actually is, okay. So that definitely appears to be working. So let's test the mana now. So now if I hit E, yep, yep, yep. So it does seem to be increasing. All right, so I kind of like that. And we also need to uh, set the number of stat points. So whenever we level up, we want to increase, uh, I think it's game manager uh, dot instance dot player stats dot stat, or what is it? Is it? upgrade points or something? Yeah. This will say five upgrade points per level. Uh, that's a bit much. Why don't we just say three? So you can add three pips to dice every level or something. So let's do some testing. So we start out with three, which uh, whenever we get this UI working, it will show the upgrade points here. So we start out with three, so if we do one, two, and three, can't upgrade anymore. So let's just assign health and mana, health and mana. We need to put the lock icon over here too, just to show that you can't actually remove these anymore. So we do that, and then we hit the E key. So we did level up a little bit. And now we should get more points to assign, so we can just you know stack some on that die. Let's level up a couple more times. Okay, now we should have tons of tons of points. Sure, let's just keep dumping points into this. Actually, does this break if I click once more? Damn it, I need to fix that. Okay. Uh, index out of range. Uh, where did I put this? It must have been not there, not there, not there, not there. It is in here. Yeah, so we need to do, or no, it's in the dice list item component. Oh, we're already there, okay. So when we upgrade, so upgrade face, so this is here. All right, so we'll say has enough, or has uh, upgrade points is equal to that. And then we will say var, oh, actually, this is greater than or equal to one. We can just say greater than zero. Then we'll say uh, die, or we'll say face at max value. And that's going to be equal to face dot magnitude is equal to nine, or we'll say greater than or equal to nine. <laughs> yeah. So as long as the face value is less than nine, we should be fine. So we'll say if they don't have upgrade points or if the face is at max value, then we want to return. Otherwise, we upgrade everything. Okay. So that should stop us from upgrading when we don't have upgrade points and upgrading when the faces hit the max value. 
So to test that, first off, we have three upgrade points, so we should be able to click one, two, ooh, something's broken, okay. So if they don't have upgrade points or face is at max value, neither of those things are true. Uh, upgrade points greater than zero, which it should be. And then the face dot magnitude, all right. Oh, or the face is not at max value, or the face is at max value. Just bad logic. All right, so let us do this. And now if we click on this, this should go to a three. Yep, and these should upgrade as well. That was three upgrade points, so we shouldn't be able to upgrade these. We can't, all right, good. So let's assign some dice. And then we upgrade a couple times. Or, yeah, we uh, level up a couple times. So now we should be able to upgrade you all the way to a nine, but no further. Great, perfect. And so yeah, upgrades should cease at some point, but yeah, very powerful dice. All right, so we always gain nine health, at least. Uh, whoops, I triggered the AI, shouldn't have done that. Okay, so yeah, we are indeed gaining exactly nine health each time. All right. And I haven't decided, I think I'm just going to remove these plus buttons and these are just going to be based on your class. All right. But yeah, uh, this is definitely working. Yeah. All right. It's weird, I always run out of stuff to do. <laughs> uh, what else do we need to do? I always run out of stuff to do. It's weird. I thought we'd have like enough to do, but like the rest of the stuff that I need to do is so fiddly that I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it on stream. I just basically I just want to be done with this game. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, I just want to be done with this game, honestly. Like it's cool and everything. It's just yeah, I want to be done with it. <laughs> uh, one thing we can do is that I want. I want it such that if we hover over an item, I want the pathfinding to go away. So we can work on that. Uh, I'm going to take a short break though, because my brain's a little bit fried. Uh, so I will be back in about five minutes, and uh, I'll see you guys.
All right, I am back. So, I've had some food, I've had some water, and I have been able to uh, stand up, get the blood flowing, uh, think a little bit. And what we're going to do, is we're going to do two things before we end this stream. Uh, the stream uh, should end in about 30 minutes, uh, so that's roughly our time limit. That's fine. It's going to be relatively easy to do. There's two things. The first thing is that whenever I hover over an item, I want the pathfinding thing to go away. Uh, another thing we might do is we might make it so that you can't move to your own tile. That's one of the things that annoys me, is that it still includes your tile in the path, which doesn't make any sense. really shouldn't be doing that, but it does. Uh, the other thing is that, yeah, I want this to go away whenever we're over an item, just so that we can sort of more easily figure out where the item hitbox is. So we'll do that. And then the other thing, too, is that whenever we hit the tab key, I want this screen to populate. Like, this will tell us um, what level we are, our... Well, we don't even need to see our health there, because we already know what it is from here. But it'll tell us uh, what level we are, um, how many stat upgrade points we have, maybe some other stuff about ourselves. And so yeah, that's what we will do, and then we will end the stream. So, for the item stuff, I believe that is in the player controller. Or sorry, it's in the player component. And it's all this horrible nonsense. Uh, so actually, I think what we want to do with hit dot collider dot tile component. Hmm. Uh, what we want to do, I think we can do uh, item is equal to uh, hit dot collider uh, dot get component. Uh, let's say item in world. So I know that those I know that those items in the world have a hitbox. So what we can say is if item in world. Or we can just say if item, right? Uh, we want to clear the path, and then we want to return. So that should, I think, work, right? So clear path. Ah, that just destroys the path. We actually want to set the tile to null. Oops. Uh, we want to say current tile is equal to null. That way we deselect the tile. So I think that should work. Let's check it out. So we do this, and then nope, something else is not working there. Uh, these have colliders, right? They do have colliders. OK. So apparently that's not detecting that we're over something, because we are. We're over an item in the world, yes. Oh, but it's not there. It's in the parent. That's the problem. I really hate doing this, but you know, it is what it is. Normally, I put the collider on the same object that, like, on the root. There we go. Now we can at least see that we're hovering over it. So now, even though the hitbox is really tiny, we at least know. We at least know we're hovering over it. Yeah, there we go. That's so much better. Uh, the hitbox definitely probably needs to be a lot bigger, but, you know, one step at a time. Actually, let's see, how big is it, relatively speaking? Uh, I mean, that's not that tiny. Does it really need to be bigger? I mean, it's really tiny relative to the size of the object, but also that might also be determined that seems statically determined, actually. OK. We can bump that up to 0.2 then. Uh, open in isolation. And yeah, the model actually doesn't get rescaled. Uh, no, not 2. 2 is a little bit large. All right. Let's see if that's any better. All right. So yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit better. So yeah, I can at least. Yeah, OK. And I can still move into the tile. That's the other, that's sort of a big problem, is making it so that we can both grab the item and move into the tile and make it obvious which one we want to do. But yeah, OK. So that's one issue. 
That took like two minutes. Okay. A more complicated one is going to be the stat component here. And if we have time, we might also make this part work. What I want is whenever we hover over a stat, I want to show its description over here. Actually, let's do that first because there's something I want to try. I wonder if you can trigger animator events as a Unity, uh, as like a Unity event. I don't know the answer to that. So if I have, let's say, it's not in the HUD. It's in the, not here, it's in stats. It's in stats here in this template. Okay, so let's say I have a on hover component here, the custom component that I ended up making. So let's say we add, I don't know, an animator to this. Can I target you and then say animator.setTrigger? Is that a thing we are allowed to do? Because if it is, that is huge. Oh my god, we can. All right, that is... Okay, that's amazing. So what that will mean is that here in this template, what we can do, yes, 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 okay. Ooh, actually, for the color, can you, uh, can you mess with one value at a time or is it you have to mess with the whole color? I don't know the answer to that. Let us, oh, interesting. Why do you have an animation? Oh, I know why you have an animation. Okay, so if we add an animation to you, put these in animations, uh, what is it? Animation stats, uh, highlight. So what will happen if I turn on keyframe and we change the color? Oh, you can change the alpha on its own. That is amazing. But that's actually not what I want to do now that I think about it. I really want to change the value. What happens? Are you? No, you don't change the value. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so I can put something behind you to lighten or darken. Can't change the tint. No, okay. So sure, let's... Uh, sure, tell you what, let us create a UI. Let's create a panel behind you. Uh, which one of you appears on top? I actually don't know. Uh, it looks like you do, right? So if I mess with this alpha, that's very interesting. Okay. Basically what I just want is I want a slight tint to show which one you're hovering over. That's all I want to do. But sure, what I can do is I can make this the background, make you not a raycast target. Just call this the background. Then make you whatever color we need. Uh, so do we want it to lighten or darken? Probably darken, right? So let's do that. Uh, we need to remove the actual sprite from you. Yes, okay. And so what we want to do is in the animator for highlight, we just want to set up the keyframes. The animation will be like 0.1 seconds, but it's fine for it to be like the full 60 frames. That's fine. And we'll go from, I think it was 10, we'll go from 10 to 30. Sure. That should be fine. And that's all we need to do for highlight and then for a new clip, we need to say unhighlight. And that will start at the end of the old clip. So we grab these keyframes, unhighlight, we add the keyframe. 
frames here. Go into keyframe recording mode, of course. And then at the beginning of view, we want it to look like this. And then we go over, all the way over. And again, they don't, we don't have to make it a 60 frame animation. I just am. So that on highlights, cool. And then that one, highlights, cool. Okay. So now we go into the animator. We grab you, cool. And then let's go into the create state here. Let's make this idle. So there's nothing. And then we make a transition. We set you as the layer default. Make transition, uh, make transition, and make transition, cool. Should be able to grab all four of you, right? Yes. And then in the settings, we want you to have a one exit time, uh, zero transition duration. No motion, that's fine. The motion here can have a speed of, let's say, five. That way it's 0.2 seconds. And then we need two parameters. So one for hide, or sorry, not parameters, but triggers. So one for hide, one, or no. Uh, one for highlight, and then one for unhighlight. Unhighlight. All right, and so here you have no exit time. We will add the, high, the unhighlight, yes. And then here we will give you uh, no exit time. Wait, your exit time should be one. All of you should have an exit time of one. Why do you not? Transition duration of zero. Yes. Okay, apparently the multi-edit just doesn't work there. Although it shows that it does. Which is very strange. Okay. You, on the other hand, you don't have an ex you do have an exit time. You don't. You don't, but you do. Yes. Okay. So you, we need to add a highlight. Okay. So now we should be able to set these triggers without ever writing any code. And I wanted to do that, but I didn't know if it was actually possible. Okay. So here, we should be able to set the animator there and the animator there. And you, this should be animator.setTrigger. Whenever we enter, it should highlight. Uh, not a string, high light. And then in here, whenever we exit, we should set the unhighlight trigger. Unhighlight. All right. And then we set this to be, that should be active. And this should be inactive. Okay. I think that works. Let me test. Uh, okay, I think it's writing the defaults, but other than that, let's have you not write defaults. Okay. Also, they might be set to loop. I don't think so, though. Uh, why is it... Strange. Curious why we're getting that behavior. What does the animator for one of these look like? So you are definitely in idle. Huh. I don't know why you're resetting at the end there. Because you're only getting one trigger set. So you should remain highlighted. Yeah, you're setting the right trigger too. We hover over you, the highlight set. Yeah, you're the first one in the list, so you should get the highlight set. But you're resetting at the end. Uh, do you, you write the defaults, okay. Maybe you shouldn't do that? Is that right? Uh, sure. Now does it work? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, now we have um, highlighting working and we're not actually ever, didn't write any code to make this work, which I like. Okay. 
because I've been wondering how you can do some UI stuff without, or how you, I'm wondering how much you can do without actually writing any code, because it would have been, would have been possible and very easy to write the code for that, it just, it's kind of annoying. Uh, so now, likewise, what we can do is we can go into, I think we had a stat screen, yeah we did, all right. So what we can have is we can have the details, right, work in a similar way. So we can say um, what we want is we want a text area to the side that just tells about the stat. So we'll say using text mesh pro to get a reference to that. And then we'll have a public um, TMP text. Text mesh pro text. TMP text. This will be the stat description. Okay. And then what we can do as we can say public void show description, show description for, and we can give it some kind of stat, yeah. Then we can say public void, um, uh, well, we don't even need to do that. We can just say show description for stat and the stat itself. Uh, yeah, a bunch of nonsense, all right. Have a public uh, string and say description. Just tell us basically what it's used for. Then we'll say stat description dot text is equal to stat stat dot description. I might have to do something else to make this work, but I don't know. Yeah, actually we will. We'll have to reference also what? Sure. We won't, uh, we won't reference this, we reference the stat upgrade component, that's what we do. The stat upgrade component. And then it'll be stat dot, I think stat, yeah. All right. And so then what we do is in the template, uh, where are you? It doesn't like something. I don't know what it doesn't like. Okay, so on pointer enter, what we want to do is we want to set up a new Unity event in the stats, we want to say stat screen component dot show description for, and then we put in the stat upgrade component here. And now using the same sort of enter code, we can show the stat description here in the details. So let us create a text mesh pro, text mesh pro, oh, can't speak today. Let's say 10, 10, uh, 10, and 10, sure. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, and 20. That's probably fine. Good margins there. Okay, and this should be, say, uh, 30 is probably fine. At bold, at bold, yeah. Why did it go to lowercase? Oh, okay, that's why. All right, and so now this should describe the stat. All right. So the way that we can test this is we can just put the word stat in here. And then we will just say, I don't know, attack, and we'll test it with attack and defense. Cool. Uh, and I need to go into here and link that. All right. Okay. So now in theory, that should work if I did that right. All right, I don't know what's breaking here. I think this is with the Unity editor though. I don't think that's our stuff. So let's say, I don't know, pawn. And then we hit tab. And yeah, now as you can see, uh, it shows the word stat. And then if we hover over attack, it says attack, defense, etc. All right, well, it's working as we expected. So I'm happy with that. Now, does that interfere with anything else? I don't think so. Good. And of course, you know, have to improve the quality of that animation a little bit, but you know, everything, you know, other than that, I think it's fine. I don't mind the uh, stuff sticking around there uh, just because, you know, it's no big, no big deal if it does. All right, so. That is all of that. Uh, what did I just do there? Oh, okay, I just tilted the camera. 
Right, so yeah, that's basically all the stuff I wanted to do today. Uh, so it has been good talking to you guys. I'm going to call the stream here. I will be back a little bit later, uh, well, specifically in two hours. Um, it should be 3 p.m. Central, and we will do some Gene Forge 2 for maybe two or three hours. And yeah, uh, it's it's a very old game, so there's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff to look at there. Uh, unfortunately, I have to fix the rendering, or I have to figure out how to actually show it on screen and not have issues. But yeah, I'll work on that between streams. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, on Monday, yeah, on Monday, either tomorrow or Monday, we'll go through what this actually looks like as the finished sort of product. Because this does have to be done by tomorrow, and it'll be very interesting to see what actually gets done. Anyway, uh, thank you for hanging out, and I will see you guys in a couple hours or on Monday, depending. <laughs>